one begins to ask the question. I mean, there are people asking questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, Oyinka Ono was there asking questions as well. And the questions, one, one of the questions that the uh, viewer asked is, you said those girls are preparing for exams. How is it that they're not speaking English? How is it that they're not speaking English? Well, the one I saw spoke English. I mean, the one I saw on TV spoke English. Halted spoke. English, but... I mean, someone asked me that, and I'll say this very bluntly. I mean, I interview people. I've interviewed university graduates who can't string sentences together. So if people have issues with the fact that their English is staggered or not sort of smooth, that's what my response will be. And also, you can't take away their shock or their trauma. Um, so yeah, that will be my response to that. Okay, the other side of it is, what about, are you not afraid of the issue of politicizing this whole thing and taking it out of context? Politicization will probably, would almost be inevitable because it serves interest. But the goal of those who are committed to this, make sure that that doesn't get done. I mean, Mrs. Owen was here earlier and she spoke about the fact that protests are welcome. However, you, you showed footage of police being sent to quell a peaceful protest. On last week during the World Economic Forum, Doing Okupe said on TV that if he had known, he would have won red in solidarity. The um, coordinating minister of the economy took a picture saying, bring back our girls. Um, so all of this is happening, and yet you send a battalion of policemen to stop a peaceful protest. They've been there for 12 days. Two days they were out on the streets. Ten days they sit. They take reports from different committees. Family members give reports. Communi the com Chibok community in Abuja give reports. We talk about meetings we plan. There's nothing that we've planned that's not been done in the full view of your cameras, everybody's cameras. So what actions in those 10 days would warrant not only police force, a water cannon, and trying to prevent people from but gathering. Don't you, is it not possible that that officer who led that squad was being overzealous? Is it not um, possible? Well, it was being overzealous for a long period of time, I might add. I would say on air that I made calls, and I was like, why, what is this? In a sense, you can say that, okay, he was being overzealous. Now, the point then is, the whole time that they were there, surrounding Unity Fountain for about two, actually, they got there at two, the meeting was supposed to start till three. They were there till about five. So in a three-hour operation, nobody above him knew what was going on. I could call them back. Even if, he, I'll give you that, he was being overzealous. But in three hours, in Abuja, nobody found out what was going on. I could call them back. So then let's, it makes you wonder, yes, we're looking for the girls. Yes, the government is concerned. Yes, this is, we want to do this. But then you send the police to, to stop people who are sitting down on mats to have a meeting. That doesn't, com I mean, the communication, then you begin to wonder what exactly are we communicating? Who are we looking? Are we on the same page? Are we on the same side? If it's about looking for the girls. What, what's the sense that you get? I was just going to ask you quickly, though. Mm. Did you get a sense from, from your meetings that, mm. you know, there were suspicions, you know, insinuations that those girls were not missing at all? Initially, there were, quite frankly. I mean, I think I still have a few conversations with people who now don't talk about ins the numbers. Uh, they talk about, uh, not that they weren't missing at all, but talk about 200 is a large number. There are still, and I think there are still a lot of people who still doubt. But I say that, um, one, because it's been a pattern over three, four years. That, for me, points clearly to the fact that there is an issue with abduction. And the fact that, at the end of the day, the responsibility lies with the federal government to be able to document all of its citizens. Yes, they live in Bornu State, but at the end of the day, they're citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So it is, the onus is on the federal government to prove otherwise. People have come forward to say their children are missing. People have come forward to say their communities were sacked. Let me put it in perspective for you. Chibok local government is about 1,350 kilometers squared has about 70,000 people, approximately. Lagos is about 1,000 kilometers squared, 17 million people. So if 200 people are missing in Chibok, it's like 5 million people being missing in Lagos, equivalent, about the same size. So if people have come forward and said they're missing people, the onus is on the federal government to respond. But the silence, I mean, the president doesn't speak for three weeks. You send police to stop a peaceful protest. There are insinuations, finger pointing. Instead of, as you said, a single story. Everybody hunker down. There's an issue. Let's address it. And if at the end of the day we find out it's a big hoax, somebody lied, somebody made up stories, somebody did it for political reasons, then your investigation will find that out. But we waste a lot of time pointing fingers and not addressing the issues and at the same time hoping the problem would go away. And then it makes a mockery of it when government officials are saying, bring back our girls. So who are they talking to? Yeah. I mean, we are talking to government to bring back our girls. But how can a minister be saying, bring back our girls? Who is she talking to? You know, time wasting is another issue we should also look at exactly. uh, because you, you, you just uh, uh, drew attention to time wasting. And if we say we have a list already from the West African Examination right. Council, and if we say the Borno State Government has been speaking, can't we by now pick that list up and see what we can do and narrow it down to who exactly we're looking out for? Exactly. We could, very simply. So we start at least, you're starting somewhere. 
you have a list from YF, you have a list of narrow down that was presented, start somewhere. Okay, who are we looking for? Where? And then if we don't even know the names of the people we're looking for, how are we looking for them? Sambisa Forest, we've talked about it. it. Sambisa Forest was a reserve. game reserve, which should have a map. I mean, game reserves that I remember going, I went to Yankari as a child. There's a map, there are outposts, there are whatever you call those little huts that you go as you transfer stuff. So why is it so challenging? And we keep talking about this as some very, um, oh, do you, I don't know use the word, but one notion for us that people can get into. So that sort of thing just makes you really, really wonder. And then you hear reports of there was given an advance notice. Monday last week, another community ran sacked. They said they operated for eight hours. With, um, how do you operate in a community for eight hours? and you don't get any response from a security agency. I mean, so there are questions, yes. But I'm saying the focus should not be in saying, how do you, how do you, how do you? Government should say, these are the issues. We are going to address them and provide information. The National Assembly has not received a proper security briefing this year. So how do you represent people where you cannot you cannot take information to them that you're getting. Did they tell you they've not received proper security yes. briefing? They said the, the only briefing they've got is more or less like, um, I read you a report, but you can't ask me questions, and then you're gone. That's not a briefing, I'm sorry. A briefing is a situation where we sit down, you say what you're doing, we ask you questions, you provide feedback. But there was, I mean, a, a, a member of the House of Representatives, initially there was fear. People didn't want to raise issues about Boko Haram for fear of being um, attacked. So how can we live in an environment where the people who we elected to represent us can't even ask questions on our Are those people complicit? Are you worried that National they might be complicit? I, I mean, if they can't ask the question of, for fear of being attacked, do you think they're complicit? I, don't, I wouldn't want to use the word complacent because that would mean, or complicit, oh wait, let's take that back. Complicit or complacent? Complicit. Complicit. I wouldn't, I would use complacent instead. And I think complacent because they can get away with it. And we keep talking about this in terms of governance in Nigeria. People get away with whatever they can. If I don't ask you questions, you don't feel any, there's nothing that propels you to give me an answer, you will not give me an answer. But we need to increase pressures because, at, at least for Nigerians, that's one area where we have a say because we elect them. Okay, mm -hmm. let's see about increasing pressure. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the Federal Ministry of Education said they wrote to the school authority, to the government, said shut down all schools. Yeah. Um, YAC said relocate, but the state government said no, they won't relocate. So where are we directing pressure now? On all sides, really, to be honest. I mean, the, as I said, meeting with Bono State Government will be tomorrow and sort of ask these questions. And Isn't that coming too late? Couldn't, couldn't that, shouldn't that meeting have held a lot earlier? It might have, but I guess also part of it is just process. Quite frankly, I shouldn't have to have a meeting with the Bono State Government, quite frankly. That should be between the federal government and the Bono State Government. That shouldn't be my role as a citizen. But I'm now having to do that because they're not doing their jobs. Mm -hmm. So yes, and it's also a process of, of, of protocol. So when can we have, we've been talking about this meeting since last week. When will, you, um, when will you be in Abuja? When? So a part of it is also process and also realizing us having to ramp up this pressure.